I've made two basketball hoops that seriously improve your game. They're fun, but they both have this fatal flaw. The ball doesn't go in if you entirely miss the hoop. And I mean, come on, it's 2020. I shouldn't have to be good at anything. So the problem is that the ball is over here and the hoop is over here. I'm building a hoop that always goes to where the ball is going so that even if you miss entirely, it's gonna go in. Even if you shoot blindfolded. Heck, blindfolded backwards in the dark, doesn't matter. And like my previous hoop, there's unlimited opportunities to torment my wife. All right, here's my game plan. I'm gonna point this Kinect, which is a 3D sensing camera, at this giant wall. I'm gonna write software that will track whenever I throw a ball and it will figure out where the ball is gonna hit on the wall. I'm gonna build a basketball hoop that I can move wherever the ball is going to go. And it's gonna do all of that between the time the ball leaves my hand and strikes the wall. I know I say this every time, but this was a really hard project. It just did not want to work. Everything that could break, broke. It just really was a lot harder than I was anticipating. Oh my gosh. How I intend this all to come together will be a lot easier to explain with the actual hoop. So let's get it made. There are tons of plasma cut and folded sheet metal parts on this machine. It's just so easy and fast. That's half of the rail for the x-axis. These are how I make one long carbon fiber rod out of two. All the wheels and pulleys are printed on a Form 3. These are composite pulleys, so the part that needs to be strong is machined and then the rest is 3D printed. French cleat is awesome, you can rearrange your shop in just a few minutes. Termoc 24R coming in handy. Normally two rails this far apart would be what you do when you hate yourself, but my mounts are spring-loaded, so alignment isn't very critical. It is not supposed to do that. Or that. The system was having a tough day. This thing is gigantic. It looked so much smaller on the computer. It's also kind of a weird design. Like my dog, it's designed for one thing and one thing only, speed. The design is optimized so the minimum amount of stuff moves and it's as light as possible. I'll be making an extremely light composite backboard and hoop, which will be mounted on this ridiculously over-engineered super light frame, which is on these incredibly light carbon fiber tubes, which are driven by belts from these extremely heavy but stationary motors. Here's a really quick demo to give you an intuitive feel for why this matters. I built this little cart. It has bearings, so very low friction. It's going to be pulled by a constant force by this belt, which is attached to a bucket with weights in it. Here's the cart with 5 pounds on it, and here's the cart with 20 pounds on it. This is why lighter is so much better for the system. This little cart is also the world's best banana peel. Hey, come check this out. Oh no, watch out! These motors I'm using have incredible torque which means they can yank on these belts super hard and super fast, which is gonna accelerate the hoop like a bullet. And things are probably gonna get pretty violent. I'm really worried about breaking a belt, especially this one that I spliced together like a total noob. I just couldn't get one long enough. There's another interesting complication on this robot, which is tilting the hoop. And you might be wondering, why do I need to tilt the hoop? I can move it anywhere on the wall. Shouldn't I be able to direct any shot in? I actually can't. There's a variety of shots that won't go in no matter where I place the hoop. If I throw the ball really hard at the hoop, it's not gonna fall down into the hoop. If I want the line drive to go into the hoop, I need to tilt it down so that it directs the ball down into the hoop. Getting the system to tilt is responsible for a lot of these ugly belts. The reason I have all these belts is to keep my pants up. Otherwise, they'll fall down and... What in the world am I reading? He asked me for help with his script. What was he thinking? The real reason I have all these belts is because I need the motors to be stationary. They're way too heavy to move around quickly so I'm transferring all their power with belts. To move the hoop, I have one continuous belt. This is the really long one that's just waiting to explode in my face. It's interesting because the final position of the cart is a combination of the position of both motors. For example, if I want to move the cart to the right, I rotate both motors in opposite directions. The backboard has two belts attached to it, one at the top and one at the bottom. To make it tilt, you pull on one of them and push on the other. The tilt motor follows this T-shaped path and connects to the second motor up top. The tricky thing about this arrangement is that the angle of the hoop is coupled to the position of the cart. If I pull the cart up, the hoop points down, and if I pull the cart down, the hoop points up. And if I take things too far, stuff's going to break. If I move the tilt motor 
it tilts. And if I move the position motors, it also tilts. So what I have to do is drive them together in the same direction and it won't tilt. If I want it to tilt, I'll basically drive the belts different amounts and then that'll give me a resulting tilt. Having all three motor positions coupled in this way is a bit annoying, but it allows me to build the system in a very light way. Figuring out how to rotate the motors isn't as bad as you might think. You can write it all out as a pretty simple system of linear equations, and then you can write that as a matrix and solve it directly without any equation manipulation. If you're wondering why you might want to know linear algebra, this is one of the very useful applications of it. There's some other pretty cool things about this design. Every pulley and idler is 3D printed, I didn't buy any. Most of the construction is sheet metal, which is really fast to make. The sliding frame is stiffened by these tensioned steel cables. They make it several thousand times stiffer than it would be without them. I have these spring-loaded followers so I don't have to line the rails precisely, and a bunch of stuff I'm just don't have time to get into. The ball tracking software works in a similar way to my previous hoop. If you want to see how it works, you can check out the previous video. I did rewrite it to fix some of the bigger issues, and it did take me several days of straight programming. Too bad it makes for boring video. All right, I just got my software on here. It's draft one. Gonna give it just a five millimeter move to make sure everything's working. Let's try again. Oh. <laughs> the belt was a bit loose because I was afraid of breaking my terrible splice and that let it jump off the pulley. All right, everything's back together. Let's try the five millimeter move again. Well, oh, there goes the belt. Exactly what I was afraid was gonna happen just happened. The belt ripped apart where I stitched it together. Hopefully I can make one that will survive. Otherwise, totally hosed. All right, it only took me seven tries. I'm getting pretty good at this. I was in integration hell fixing all of the software and mechanical system issues for a long time. For days, there were a lot of problems. The wounds are still fresh, so we're gonna just kind of gloss over this. We're especially not gonna talk about how the cart would follow an L shape rather than a diagonal line, and how I walked over eight miles in my own house going up and down the stairs trying to fix it. It's done and that's all that matters. It took quite a while to get here, but let's just move it to see if it works. Looks good enough to me. I'm going to sleep. It is really late. I want to test the system out for real throwing balls, but there's this tricky problem, which is that the Kinect, which is the 3D camera, it's mounted up here. It's looking out at the hoop in the room, but it doesn't actually know which way is up or how it's angled or where the wall is or where the hoop is. All it tells me is that this point in the picture is this far from the camera. To predict where the ball is going to go and where to move the hoop, I have to know where the Kinect is relative to everything. To deal with this issue, I made a calibration program. It takes an image from the Kinect. This represents how far everything it sees is from the camera. So what you do is you just paint where the wall is. So you do the same thing for the floor. And then you select where the center of the backboard base is. So now the hoop knows where the Kinect is relative to the wall and everything's gonna be very accurate. I wrote this program to avoid measuring everything by hand, which probably would have taken about two hours maybe. This took a whole day. So the big question is if this is worth it or not. Oh, come on. Is that even a question? All right, it's time to test it out. It says it hit there, which it did. So why no moving? I think I hear it moving. It's moving really slowly. All right, my calibration thought that a millimeter was a meter and that the world was upside down and a few other things that happen when you write code like this, but I think I have it all sorted now. is that? Seeing this thing intercept the ball is like the best feeling ever, but it's only half the system. I still need a backboard that can tilt with a rim on it. I've been testing without it because the way the belts interact, I didn't want to be crashing all the time with the hoop, so I've just put off making it. Let's get that made and then take it to the next level. I'm making it out of super light fiberglass and foam. I machined the backboard core on my Tormac 24R. It makes it really easy to get these inserts in the right spots. This backboard turned out awesome. It's foam core with fiberglass reinforcement. That makes it really, really stiff but light. The reason I made this aluminum rim is that the stock one is incredibly heavy steel. And this is about four to five times lighter than 
the backboard plus rim. Here you go. Oh! If that isn't the coolest thing you've ever seen, wow. This thing is so much fun. I've got to have my wife try this out. Hey, wife. All right, here to be pranked. Why would I prank you? Yeah. Is the nest supposed to be like that? Oh yeah, let me get it. What? All right, give it a shot. That definitely had to be a fluke. Kobe. All right, my turn. Well, you play like a nerd. Must be an engineer. I also got you this. Ah, uh, it all makes sense now. So it's doing the cross product. Yeah, that's basically what does it. And I thought she liked programming. You know what? Even losing this hoop is a pleasure. Now I can really make it rain. This hoop is so cool, it is really satisfying to see it working. For a while there, I thought it wasn't gonna work. Sometimes it just does completely the wrong thing. It sometimes thinks my head is a ball. I need to look into the code because my optimizer keeps trying to swish the shot rather than bounce it off the backboard, which isn't the best strategy because it's more sensitive to error in my estimated trajectory. In other words, it hits the rim. Backwards, blindfolded, in the dark. For my next video, I'm planning to make the next version of this bat. I really want to break the record. And I have a metal bat, which should help me withstand the stresses. And I talked a lot about powering it with three shells, but then I realized I have four shells. So why not just four? It's one more. Should be really good. Twice as powerful as before. So that's the plan. If you like what I do, you should consider subscribing. It helps me out and it also helps you out because you'll get notified when I have new videos like this bat. The other way you can help out is by checking out any sponsors I have on the videos, if I have any. So I was looking at my head, and it reminded me of the sponsor of today's video, Keeps. You may think my haircut robot's your only risk of hair loss, but you'd be wrong. I'm not going bald. Me either. Well, the stats would really beg to differ. Two out of the three of us will probably have some hair loss by the time we're 35. What? Then what are we going to do? The best thing to do is get ahead of the problem while you still have hair. Aren't the treatments super expensive? I spent all my money on tools. Well, you're in luck because Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss treatments. So even if you spent all your money on tools, you can still afford it. It's also super easy to get. You can visit a doctor online and they'll mail it directly to your house. So there's this old saying that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of hair. At least I think that's how it goes. My point is that it's a lot easier to prevent hair loss while you still have hair and it can take four to six months for Keeps to start showing results. So you should act now while you still have got some hairs left on your head. So if you're ready to take action to prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash stuff made here, or click on the link in the description to get 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash stuff made here.